Hey everybody, Princess Friend here. So we've had fun so far talking about why Rosie Gaines left the MPG and actually why Des Dickerson left Prince and the Revolution. But I actually have a pretty interesting theory that I have in my mind, and that's that while yes, Prince did fire the revolution, I don't think he wanted to. Before we begin, we release awesome videos every week here on Prince's Friend, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that today. We hope you will enjoy your experience. So we all know Prince and the New Power Generation, and the way that Prince ran that band. Started with a set number of people, and as he went along, some people came in, some people came out. But that didn't make the band no longer the New Power Generation. It just meant that it was the New Power Generation with different members. You know, we're gonna swap out Sonny T with Rhonda Smith. We're gonna swap out uh, Cora Coleman Dunham with John Blackwell. There's a lot of different switch-ups that he did, you know, unless it was just Prince or until basically he got to Third Eye Girl, it was kind of always just the New Power Generation and he would have different members doing different things. And that was cool and there was no problem with that because he really liked highlighting a lot of different artists and he liked to switch things up for different stage performances and music that he was writing and all kinds of stuff. Really what that does is that brings me back to how the revolution was fired and how he split ways with them. And I don't think he intended to get rid of the revolution. I think honestly, getting rid of the revolution is why we got the new power generation, but that the revolution was his first plan. And if it had gone the way he wanted it to go, then he probably would have been Prince and the revolution for the majority of his career instead of Prince and the new power generation. So let's go back to kind of Prince and the revolution and how they got fired, right? So apparently there were already rumblings under the surface. Prince had an amazing time with the revolution, 1999, Purple Rain, and even on Around the World in a Day. And then he started to kind of want to play around with some things. He wanted a more dynamic stage show, so he brought on Wally and Brooks. Uh, he That was also when Jerome came in. He started bringing in some horns. He brought in Miko. He brought in, like, a ton of different people. And there's actually an interview with The Revolution where they're kind of talking about some of the time here, and I'll put the, uh, the link in the description so you can go look at that as well. But there was a time where basically Prince started rehearsing with all of these other people and not with the revolution anymore. And actually started not even talking or looking at members of the revolution. So, you know, it kind of became that sort of thing where they they saw they saw the writing on the wall, you know, it was kind of a, a dick thing to do. Hashtag dick thing to do. Uh, <laughs> which is something from some of my earlier reviews. Because when you look at some of the, you know, things that went down in those early years, uh, you know, Prince, I don't think was... Uh, mature enough to handle things in a, a direct way. He would not talk to you and then would, you know, get mad at you because, you know, you didn't come to rehearsal. It's like, well, you, you didn't tell me you needed to come, need to come to rehearsal because you didn't even talk to me. So here's how it went down. So Prince sat down with Wendy and Lisa and essentially fired them. Like, they had sat down, they had a good dinner, and then he's like, dude, you guys are gone. Then he said to Bobby, hey, Bobby, guess what? Sheila's going to come in and she's going to do some amazing stuff on the drums, you know, so I don't need you anymore. But here's the, here's where we hit the point where I believe that I don't, I don't think he wanted to get rid of the revolution was that he asked Brown Mark to stay. And Brown Mark said, no, he says, I'm loyal to the band. So I'm leaving. And he said, and Dr. Fink, I want you to stay as well. And Dr. Fink's like, cool. I enjoy doing the music with you. This sounds great. You have this thing where Really, he just wanted to swap out a couple of members, and he ended up having to replace an entire band. And we all we all know kind of where that went. Miko ended up taking over for Wendy. Brown Mark got replaced with Levi Caesar Jr. Uh, Bobby Z got replaced with Sheila, and Lisa ended up getting replaced with Bonnie Bowyer. So, um, and then the Horn stayed around. Wally and Brooks stayed around. That became the Love Sexy Band, and then he threw Cat in there, and it became an amazing giant show where um, the music was way more dynamic and uh, and and everything. Because I mean, basically, I've always kind of said that the Revolution was an amazing recording band. Um, but live, 
uh, you know, Prince, I think, excelled there despite his band and not because of his band. And I think he even saw that, which was why he wanted it to go in that direction. But I also believe the Love Sexy Band didn't even need to be a thing. I think it was just going to be a brand new revolution with a brand new drummer and brand new guitar guitarist and organ player. But the bassist was gonna stay the same, keyboards were gonna stay the same, and they could have technically stayed around for decades and decades and decades. But then obviously Brown Mark said no, and Dr. Fink ended up going off to produce and do more music production on the side there, so he ended up getting replaced. The main people who ended up replacing the revolution, they stuck around for a few years until Prince found brand new people that he really wanted to start this brand new movement with, and that was the new power generation. And then going forward, it was the new power generation for years and years and years. But I think that the revolution was going to be his first try in that. I think this was his first time dealing with people in that vein because what i've also researched and i've i've found is that there were there was definitely some hurt feelings in the way that he did it but not all but also around the timing that he did it because he ended up doing it around the time that he was breaking up with Susanna Melvoin, and then that was part of the, the the friction between him and Wendy and Lisa. They were kind of a foursome, kind of hanging out all the time, and then there was the breakup, and then there was like split loyalties, and I don't know all of the details, but it was all around that same time, so there were a lot of hurt feelings as well. But I believe if it wouldn't have gone down that way, it would have been Prince and the Revolution all the way up until he switched to Prince and Third Eye Girl, honestly. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. This is just a fun kind of topic that I was just thinking of, and I was like, man, I should do a video about that. But I don't think that he meant to uh, fire the revolution. I think he meant to fire Bobby Z and Wendy and Lisa and keep the revolution. But what do you guys think? Let's discuss it down in the comments. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Also, don't forget to hit us up on Patreon and all that stuff. May you live to see the dawn and have a great day. Prince sat down with Lindy and... Lindy and Lisa. Honey, don't you know I will slap the waves out your head if you do not subscribe?